Yo, what's up, guys? So, I saw a lot of questions in the Discord, and I thought I'd make a starting guide for everyone, considering I see the same repeated questions over and over again. And I will also link a Trello that Naz and K worked on, and are still working on and updating. So that'll be in the description. I'll also provide some tier lists for heroes and other things, but we'll get to that after. So, starting off, first thing, first dungeon right here, you have your main quest, you would talk to this person, they would provide you a quest on the right hand side, you would do this dungeon. Upon completing the dungeon, you'll be given gear. You would equip the gear, pretty basic, normal, like MMO type. Obviously, in the beginning, you just want to progress through the difficulties. You would go easy, normal, hard. And so, there was a rework for the weapons to where you have to roll them with coins. I've been asked if it's worth rolling for them. Honestly, I would only roll once per dungeon, unless you can't clear. If you can't clear, then it's probably best to move on and try to roll something a little bit higher but you don't really want to waste all your coins here don't get me wrong you'll get a lot of coins later on but early on you're not going to have access to that many coins another thing to note there is a free exp person here he will give you a boost every i want to say it's every 20 hours but i'm not 100 percent certain but he is here and he's in world 2 as well Another thing I want to talk about is the Battle Pass. A lot of people are asking me if the Battle Pass is worth buying. Guys, it's 200 Robux. It's got tons of gems, stat reset tickets. This set that they give you is actually really good. It's an XP boost of 20%, and it has additional stats on it. And they give you cosmetic coins and boosts. In my opinion, it's worth it. Some people are saying it's not worth it. Obviously, if you don't have the money to spend, that's not a problem. Don't buy it. And, yeah. Obviously, I'm not going to go in depth with, like, pay to win and stuff. Because that is just something for another video. <clears throat> so, I will show the cosmetic set. This is the set that they give you. This is the 200 Robux set. You have to get decently far in the Battle Pass to get all four of these. But... It's worth it in the end. 20% XP plus additional stats on top of it. Another 6% here. So that's 26% total. Obviously I have this, but we're not counting that. So. That's for that. We have the cosmetic shop as well. Which is where you can roll for cosmetics. Obviously the best set right now is this set right here. It is 10% XP per piece. In my opinion, it is really worth it. But, cosmetics are extremely expensive, and I honestly would recommend running this set over trying to pull that. And that's the reason you see me running it right now. Obviously, I have the chakra set, but this is the best DPS set in the game. This isn't 4 XP. Later game, you're going to want XP over damage because you're going to be so strong, it won't really matter. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about stats. I get this question a lot as well. Everything is going to go into attack. A lot of people like to vary out their stats. I did that in the beginning as well. I tried the other ones as well. I put a few stat resets. I put all into health to see how much it would give me. It's not worth it, guys. Just go all into attack. It doesn't make a difference in the end. <clears throat> the little bit of attack is a boost. The health is barely anything. It's like 300k. Out of my 173 mil, it's just not worth it. And the other ones are just not worth it either. Because you pretty much max crit rate at all times once you have a piece of gear with crit on it. The next thing is fruits. I get this question a decent amount as well. Pretty much everything on here I get asked daily. Fruits. Should I roll fruits or heroes first. 
Most people would probably say heroes because it costs less. <clears throat> My opinion here is you roll a fruit first. Some people disagree with me, but I think rolling a fruit is better because you want to roll either the light flute, the light fruit, or the love fruit. If um, starting out like without much gems or if you're not paid to win or anything like that, the light fruit is going to be the best thing you can get. It is the third best fruit in the game, as you can tell by the rankings here. Fox is all right. It got nerfed heavily, so it's not that good anymore. This is the fruit I'm currently using, which is the new solo leveling fruit that just came out. This is the best one in the game. I will link the video showcasing this fruit that I posted earlier. It is a very good fruit. I definitely recommend it, but it is very expensive to pull. The hero summon. Zaruto, in my opinion, is the best. I will link a tier list in the bottom of the description that will show all the best rankings. Zaruto's A rank on there, but another thing that people don't understand, once you get to endgame, you don't need damage, and Saber and them have damage, which is why they're at the top of S tier. But once you get to a certain point, you need XP, and Zaruto has XP. And I will show his stats here. He has 10% XP. But it's fine. I will link it. That is up to you. The standard is if you want a specific one. So if you want to roll only Zaruto, or you only want to roll Mingo, or someone like that, you would roll standard. <clears throat> Most of the time, I don't recommend rolling this. But if you're looking for a very specific one and you can't pull it, because obviously this is a pull for everyone. A lot of people don't understand this. These three people are just double immortal chance. But you can pull anyone out of the pool in this one. You can pull, for example, for example, you could pull Saber out of this by accident. Just because, just because they're here does not mean you can pull them from this. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the quest. This is where you're going to get your gems to afford the things <clears throat> like fruits and everything else. You will get a total of four quests daily. This is a total of 900 gems, I believe. 900 gems daily. Weekly, I believe it's 1.5 to 2k. It's somewhere around there. I don't know the number off the top of my head. And this will also give you your Battle Pass XP. This will also give you Battle Pass XP. And your World Quest will also give you base XP and gems as well. All important to complete. Main Quest will also give gems and base XP. Let's talk about the new content update that just came out. Which is the solo leveling. This content is not that good, guys. Um, I'm pretty disappointed with it. I'm not going to lie. I was expecting something bigger. The fruit is amazing, of course, but the actual content update was not that good. The swords here, I've heard, are trash and they are not worth rolling for. So I would suppose don't roll for them. Obviously, I don't have to roll for them, so I'm not really sure. Uh, but the titles, they these are very easy to get. Um, I've seen level 60s completing this dungeon because it doesn't scale heavy heavily so it is up to you if you want to try to get this early on if you're just starting i would recommend it because a, a bonus like 600 attack if you can get to wave at 100 or you can get carried there are people who carry all the time in this in the discord i'll link the discord as well so you guys can find a group if you need that <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, it's an easy attack bonus. I would recommend doing it just to get as far as you can. And let's talk a bit about equipment. <clears throat> so, once you get a piece of gear, you will be able to fuse that equip. As you can see, you can put things into it, and that will level it up. That will give you a green bonus next to it. And then there's also the, the upgrade system, which is a starring system. But basically, if you have three of the same type, you can star it, you can make it one star, then you can make it two star. Two star is max. This is the max you can get. You can look at the base difference here, 3.49 mil, and then 7.69 mil. It's a big difference. 
Fist is the best one in the game that you can get because it is the highest attack and you would run this with a fruit. So realistically, as you can see, I'm saving them. I need one more to finish this. But in the end, I want this because as you guys can see, the base attack is almost the same as my two star. All right. Now that that's out of the way, once your equipment is full here, everything will go to the mail. So once that inventory is full, everything will go to your mail. You can claim everything. And yeah, that's basically it for this area. There will be a teleport here unlocked at level 60. This will allow you to go to the next area. So we're going to go to this area now. It'll do its little boat animation. Just wait it out. And we're going to talk about a few small things over here. Nothing too serious, but I have had a lot of questions with progression because people are struggling once they get here. Because World 2 is once it actually starts to get difficult. Once you get to World 2, <clears throat> when you start off, you're going to do easy. You will do easy until you unlock hard. You're most likely not going to be able to go to normal yet. Hard, you're going to have to do manual, most likely. Whenever you unlock a new place and you unlock harder hell, you're going to have to do it manual. This is when you start to realize that you're going to have to play manual sometimes and uh, I know you may want to auto most of the time, but you will have to manual sometimes. So you would manual harder hell until you get a legendary back or a certain piece that will help you survive and clear the dungeon. Once you're efficiently clearing with, uh, once you're efficiently clearing auto, then you can see if you can clear easy here. If you can't clear easy here, you're going to continue with hell over here until you unlock hard over here. Then you're going to manual the dungeon until you can clear up to hard. Then you would manual after. It's up to you if you want to clear hard. I personally go to hell because hell has a 25% chance of drop rate of legendaries. And it also has a 1.35% chance of mysterious. And even when you don't clear the dungeon, you still have the chance of getting the drops. So I don't think it's that important to go to hard immediately because it's just not it's like a one point or no it's like a two percent chance yeah it's a 2.5 percent chance you can try it if you want i sometimes do it it depends and yeah so we're gonna talk about this forge forge is it's not really that useful unless you're going for the chakra set which like i said this is the best dps set this is good but it's not the best in game right now because once you are a certain level you don't need dps anymore and you will get to that point where it's just like what well, what's the point of having the dps because for example i'm 26 mil almost and two mil defense i don't need anything i can pretty much one shot everything almost in the next dungeon so i'd rather run xp percent because i want to focus on levels so, in World 1, you can get necklaces. But, once you get to World 2, you'll start to realize that the drop pool doesn't have any necklaces anymore. And the reason that is, is because defense is where we get our necklaces. 1 to 50 is normal. It is hard. 1 to 50 is harder than 50 to 250. People will ask why. Well, because 50 to 250 is only bosses. So, basically, once you get to 50 to 250, I might be able to show it here, actually. No, never mind, it's bugged out. 50 to 250 is bosses because it only goes up by 10 levels each time. People do carries for those, too. You can probably get a carry, but you will have to be the level requirement to wear the equip anyways. So... It's up to you. Um, yeah, so I still need to farm my necklace, but don't worry about that. This AFK chamber is useless. I don't recommend it at all, unless you are unable to play dungeons at night or something, or you're trying to play a game in the background and your computer just can't run it. I would do this, 
but for the most part, I would just avoid it in general because it is not useful and it is a waste of your time. Just a few things from here. Obviously, I don't want to talk too much about pay to win, but for some things I'd recommend buying, I would recommend buying this VIP and I would recommend buying this. These are the only two things that really matter in my opinion. And then if you want to buy like gems and stuff, obviously this is a more pay to win option. But yeah, in the end, it's it's just gems are kind of worth it. But if you're going to go all out, I would just buy cosmetic coins instead because these are way harder to get than gems. Unless you're trying to roll the fruit or something. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. There's not really much else to talk about. If you have any questions, you can ask me. I just thought I'd address some of the things that people keep talking about in the Discord. So yeah, that's all. Peace.